Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. And in a previous video, we were looking at the Smart Reverb and some cool things we could do with the Freeze and the Infinite on it. Uh, we specifically looked at this arpeggiation sound and we went ahead and you know made a, a cool freezing effect. You know, that's pretty awesome. And while I was doing it, the whole time I was thinking, geez, what if I did some sort of a pitch freezing kind of thing? And instead of, um, you know, having it freeze like this, treat that like a pad that I could temporarily re-pitch into something else. So like potentially have these become chords even. So today we're going to dive into a patch that will allow us to take the audio re-pitch it using the re-pitching plugin that is now available in FL Studio. It's a more recent plugin. This is going to be an intermediate patcher tutorial where I'm going to take you, hopefully if you're a beginner, and show you a bunch of cool things you can do with it. There is a very similar patch out there uh, for doing this with vocals. If you go on ImageLine, we're going to be basically making the same patch just with sort of a different goal in mind. And it is uh, the one they use in their demo to retune the vocals. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a nice thing to know how to do, and it's real nice to be able to do it without having to rely on a preset. If something breaks, you know where it broke, that kind of a thing. And if you want to extend the range, one of the one of the things that that patch does is, uh, given the plugin we're using, it only has one octave range. But if you want to extend that range, if you're going to use a different plugin, it is totally possible. Maybe we'll even explore that a bit. So let's go ahead first and. Uh, let's leave the smart reverb where it is right now. So let's just say I like these effects as they are. Um, I like these like pitch freezing moments. Yeah, that's nice, right? So let's go ahead now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a patcher. Now there's going to be a bunch of things we really quick have to add. So the first thing is a patcher. The next thing we're going to need to add is a MIDI out plugin. MIDI out. And I want to do this on a blank pattern. We'll call it, you know, the the MIDI pitch info pattern, why not, whatever. And it's been a while since I've looked at this track, so we're gonna I'm gonna have to come back to this a bit. But let's go ahead and really quick just highlight sort of a region that we can loop through. And I'm gonna set this to port two. This is gonna send the note information so that when we re-pitch things, it will use this. So now we're gonna come back over here into our patcher, and patcher, FL Studio, we need to get the notes that we're going to be placing down here. So I'm going to right click on this, go to outputs, go to events. And in here you have all your MIDI ports. We're going to be listening over port two. Port zero is sometimes uh, some plugins will do like weird stuff because it can be a global port. So I usually just, you know, err on the side of caution and go two up because one can also occasionally be sort of a special number. So I usually start at port two just to avoid any potential issues. It probably is fine if you choose the other ones. So, okay, now that we're here, we're gonna go for the pitch freeze and let's just do a single band first. So I'm gonna ignore some of the setup here. So right now the audio is coming in, going through this, this pitch shifter and then coming out. So this is gonna allow us to, you know, move it around. There is a voice mode and the voice mode will not sound good with this, uh, but the music mode will sound great. So if we play this, We could increase the density a bit, make it a little smoother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see, there's some cool possibilities here. So what we're gonna do is we need to link it up so that we could control this with a with a note. And if the note goes, you know, one note up, we want that to go one semitone up. So this should go from like zero to one, and then from one to two. If we go, you know, a second note up. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We're going to take advantage of something called the envelope controller. So if you push uh, F8, this is a shortcut to bring this up. And we want the envelope controller. This one right here is going to be great. Fruity envelope controller. And we're going to take that MIDI information we're going to put here. This would be where we put our notes. We're going to stick it on here. Okay. And we're going to use this. This plugin has these different articulators. We have up to eight of them. And we're going to take this output and feed it to the pitch input here. So we're going to go ahead and go right click it, go outputs, output the controller, articulator one. 
and we're going to feed this if you just drag it'll actually like open it for you so it's a bit of a shortcut and we're going to go to pitch so now this is going to send pitch information the envelope controller has a couple different features in it right now it's using what is called an envelope we don't want this so we're going to turn this off because we want it to just be a gated signal we could set the envelope to that but you can also just turn it off it's easier uh, so we're going to go in the envelope on articulator one we're going to go to the keyboard mapping by default it is just zero across the board and we are going to turn on the snap by default snaps not on and it always it always drives me bananas so this is the middle value right here we're going to be placing our notes and we want to be able to go 12 notes below and 12 notes above so this is the mapping if you want to be really fancy you can like zero out these other regions so that you just hit the the minimum and the maximum so this is like the nicest looking version of the curve and if you have a plugin that can go further, uh, maybe has more octaves that it can pitch shift to, uh, you could just extend this curve. And I don't want this top note. Do I have slide on? Like, what's the deal here? Is it this thing? It might be that thing. There we go. It was that thing. So you could extend it, you know, out another bar and another bar up here, and you could, you know, get more octaves. But for now, these are our only octaves. So when I play notes, we'll actually see here. There's, a, there's the note I'm playing, and there's like where it's being set. If I play a note that's too high, we'll just get the highest possible value. And if we look at what the pitch shifter is doing now, you can see when I play notes in the, in the range that we have set, that one octave range, it'll you know intelligently go down or up an octave. Very, very handy. There is another plugin we could take a look at too that can, can do this as well. And let's go ahead now, and we, we're pretty much set to go. So if I put notes on this channel, we'll hear them. Now, I need to know what chord we're playing because, uh, yeah, I have no idea what chord. So let's go ahead. Let's just grab this MIDI real quick. Go down to our MIDI info one on our new blank pattern and put that in. So now it's lined up, and we kind of have an idea of what's going on. And let's just hear this. Let's just hear what's going on. We can finally sort of listen to what we've done here. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be way, way, way over the top uh, currently. So let's go ahead and try to tighten this up a little bit more. First, let's uh, put in some more reasonable notes. First, let's just try, you know, what would this sound like if I had this going, you know, this like an A just going all the way through. And then for the pitch shifting here. Maybe we have a, I don't know, a B or a D could work. We've got that A still. And let's go ahead here. The There's the infinite going on right there. It's going to drive me bananas. So for these sections right here, if I want the pitch shifter, let's say I, I don't want it to turn on when I'm not playing a note. So maybe as sort of as a gating effect. How can we do that? Because that sounds like something that was going to be pretty dang useful, right? So let's go back to the patcher. And the way we could do this is we could connect the mix control to be zero when a note is not being played and 100 when a note is being played. And this is exactly what an envelope is good for. So we are going to take articulator ones well not articulator one so we use articulator one so we're going to use articulator two articulator two so let's go ahead let's go outputs controllers articulator two drag it over here and let go of the mouse i always want to hold it down and do we have mix here yeah it's number four so we'll attach that to the mix articulator two currently on the envelope looks like this so if we turn this on it's going to ramp up come down and down actually i wonder if it'll just gate if we if we just do that it goes down to 50 percent. okay so yeah we're going to turn this on and we're going to have it so that when we push a note it's going to turn on it's going to sustain and then it's going to release and we might have a fade in fade out that's you know uh quite quick so it's sort of just smoothed i'm not sure if this is really going to matter for the mix control but see now it's zero so i play a note i go to the note it goes down so now this will act more like a, a gate 
when we have this on, and this may be a little bit more useful of an effect. So we could have it, you know, this note will have it, and then this note won't. And you see that, that might be quite a bit more handy. So that's actually not in the other patch I was talking about. So that's kind of like, you know, bo bonus information. So here it goes down to a G. Okay, so of course we're gonna need to sort of uh, wind this up here and see, you know, what, what part will work well. So let's really quick uh, see uh, with everything else going on what this would be like. So it looped right there. Actually, I, I quite like that already. Now there is something there is there is something inherently I don't like about it, and that is that this effect is is on the original sound as well. And I already I have these automations on this original sound. So there's a couple ways I could deal with this. Uh, I could redo the patcher with a send that has just the verb. That's option number one. And I could do that right now, but it'd be basically just resetting everything up. The other option is I could automate this mix control on and off or have it like halfway at times, which is sort of the easier way out. Uh, so we're probably going to do that one. That doesn't sound the best either. So I might just leave it on 100%. But if you wanted to have the two separate and find like some really nice harmonic information or uh, write some nice harmonies, the setting it up on a separate channel with, you know, just pure verb may be a better solution for you. So you have way more control over the, you know, dry, wet in a way that is just more easy to deal with. is an easier workflow. So let's go ahead and add in the harmonies now. So that's one voice done. And the whole thing is now uh, we could just duplicate this and have a second voice. But as soon as you want to do a second voice, you might be wondering, well, geez, how do I do a second voice? Because all the notes I'm going to write are going to come out this port. And if I just clone that port, how's it going to know which note to give? You know what I'm saying? Like if I write in a, a second note here, like a C, how is it going to know that, you know, the C should go to one of those and the A should go to the other? Because what's going to end up happening is this port it's just going to send both of these notes out and it's going to go to this and it's going to go to another one and who knows what it's going to pick. So that that's our first issue. So there is a plugin to deal with this exact problem. It's called the VFX VFX uh, color mapper. And what it does, you, you, you barely need to do anything to even configure it, is it takes the colors of the notes you write in the MIDI channel and it will output it over a unique MIDI channel. So you can immediately repitch stuff or trigger different synths. There's, there's a billion things you could use this for, but basically it makes it so you can separate this the MIDI signals based on the color of the note, which is super, super handy. So we are going to take this and attach this here, and then we're gonna take voice one and attach it. So this is the exact same thing, only now voice one, this green voice, will be attached to the whatever green notes we have. So here, both these notes are green. Let's make this note this like lighter green. So they're pretty, uh, they, they increase pretty gradually. So you might choose another voice if you only have a few, maybe like a purple one and a red one. Uh, but they have the first four connected already. I'm going to go ahead and change this to voice four since it looks pretty different. You can see. So now what will happen is it'll it'll make that first voice the green one. And then we have, you know, our second voice. Now, if you're going to do this, it will not work quite yet. You have to also in the MIDI plugin, turn on map note color to MIDI channel. So this will send this information out. If you don't do that, it ain't going to work. Uh, you'll be driven mad. <laughs> so just so you know, turn that on. So now with that set up, let's go ahead, come in, and we'll go into Patcher. Unfortunately, I know of no way currently to just copy chains. So we're going to have to set this all up again. Uh, so, I, I mean, there's no copy option in here. It's one of the things I'm always like, oh, I hope they add this someday. Um, if it is in there, I, I'm unaware. So you, please drop a comment. So we're going to take voice. We did voice four. So we'll take voice four. And you can, of course, add more voices if you go to the outputs. Like there's a bunch more in here. You just um, 
they don't give them to you like by default because usually, you know, they just set up the first four for you, which is pretty nice. So, okay, we've got our second articulator. There's two things we need to do. The first thing is on this one. We need to take the envelope, turn it off. Actually, knowing what we're going to do, we could just make this the envelope, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go to keyboard mapping, turn on snap, and add a point here, and add a point here. And now we've got our snap. Turn that off. I really wish it would remember like your last setting. And we'll, we'll do the safeguard. When I set this up, I often don't do this. And th what, what ends up happening is when you play higher low notes, you get, you get weird behaviors because it just picks whatever index this is at. So we're just going to set this up. So there you go. We got our one octave mapping and two, we're going to go to the envelope, turn it on and make it into a gate. And I made ours a little like smooth gate, which again, probably doesn't matter that much, but there you go. We've got like a smooth rise and a smooth release just to clean it up. Just in case we're going to go to F8. We're going to grab the pitch shifter plugin, which is right here. We're going to enable the outputs for articulator one and articulator two. Articulator one shall control the pitch. Articulator two shall control the mix. And we will feed the output here. So we're just making a duplicate. So we're, we're gonna do just two voice harmony. You could, you know, set this up with 16 voices if you really wanted to. We're gonna sum this to the output. Now we've got two of them. Now this pitch shifter, it's already in music mode and I'm gonna turn the density up uh, which will just make it a bit smoother. And that's that's pretty much it. Now, if we play it, we should hear those two notes. Uh, now, this didn't move. All right, settle down, settle down. Uh, which means that... Oh, you know what? We're playing a C here. Let's choose something different. We'll do an E. A and E, that'll work, right? We got a perfect fifth there. That'll be kind of nice. And we should see this move. Okay, so let's see, now that we've got this all set up, so we've got all the behaviors set up. Now the name of the game is, can we make this sound uh, nice or cool? You know, can we do that? And also let's make sure, yeah, the mix, the mix is doing exactly what it's supposed to, just a quick verification. Okay, so let's just listen to this real quick, see if we can't find a nice note. Okay, I've realized my mistake. This whole time I've been sitting here writing notes like A is an A and, and D is a D where this, this is a pitch shifter. It's not actually, we're starting at the note we're at. So if we play a C, it's gonna just, you know, do nothing because we haven't shifted any. Uh, so we gotta look at this as a set number of semitones. And uh, just for your reference, uh, three semitones is a minor third, five is a perfect fourth, seven is a perfect fifth. So let's say I want a fifth. You could also just think of it in terms of the harmony of C major. So let's just say, okay, let's just do C major. So a fifth is just a G which I think is, is much faster. I teach music theory, and so I'm also just really savvy with the interval numbers, but that might be weird. I don't think very many people think that way. I teach intro theory, so I practically live this stuff. So uh, yeah, we'll just go for a fifth here. And then, I don't know, we could try out something like, you know, a major third, maybe even a minor third. That hissing, by the way, is the infinite verb. <laughs> I have it stop, the play had stopped there. See right there, that might not be so good. I don't know, major work? No. See, and here, now this makes a ton more sense. So we could try something like having one of the voices, you know, un untuned. Or we could even have it come down a fourth, which would be the equivalent of going up a fifth. Maybe keep them octaves. And then, yeah, here's where I, I made mistakes there because I was thinking in terms of like uh, regular harmony. But there is a little bit of what's possible. So in this particular example, kind of a weird case. Uh, I don't think it really works well with what I'm trying to do here. Again, we might try mixing it in a little less. 
and have it sort of fade into the background a bit, just as a nice little uh, extra. So something I'm thinking about adding real quick is let's add one more verb. Uh, we will add uh, this time. This time, let's just go for the fruity verb and we'll toss that on at the end here and send both things into this and then out. So this is just going to wash it out. We'll get rid of the dry signal, have it be completely wet. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a low cut on there. We get this nice washed out effect and we're able to dial in how much we want and we can even change. Whoops. You can also just hit enter if a window ever does that to you. Okay. Okay. Infinite reverb. We get it. Um, you can also change the pitch. So let's say that, hey, we want to experiment with something like, you know, a fourth instead. Or maybe we just stay right there on the octave and up an octave. Okay, let's get a clean... <laughs> the verbs can be messy because of the decay time, but here we go. I think this is a much better effect, so we're sort of washing out, blurring it out, and taking advantage of this re-pitching to create some cool shimmering effects. And you could always stack these uh, by putting on a, another pitch shifter right after it. And this brings me to the last thing you could do. So these pitch shifters only go up one octave. And I believe the kilohertz one goes up a bit further. Uh, pitch shifter 64, if we grab this and just take a quick peek. Yeah, we can go up two, up and down two octaves. So let's say that I, I want to use this for, for one of these pitch shifters. So pretty easy to replace them. Uh, we could just delete this. There's a couple other ways you could do this, but I'm going to drag this on here. We're going to connect this. Now, this one doesn't look nearly as nice, but we're going to go. The first ones will be really nice. So we'll go for the pitch control and we'll also grab the, uh, the mix control for articulator two. We're going to take the audio and feed it here as well and we will take this and mix it out so now it's the same thing only this one has a bigger octave range so when we come into the the keyboard mapping we did on articulator one we can drag this out to be one more octave and it just opens up the width now the difference with this is this doesn't have as many features as pitch shifter does um, this makes more sense to use in the kilohertz system, but one reason you might grab it is again, instead of doing stacked pitch shifters to try and get like further up and down, you could just use this one. And although it is simpler, you know, it's got a certain charm to it with the simplicity. And let's say that we take this one and chillax there, bruh, and we bring this down. You can see it's shifting the exact same way. So there's 12. There's 24, and if we go lower, it doesn't it doesn't go any lower because of how we set it up. We can bring this down. In fact, you know that could be a, a cool thing, or we could bring this, you know, like way up. Uh, this F, maybe we bring this F up above it, so we get an even higher shimmer texture. That would be hard to do with the other one because it's limited to one octave. It sounds kind of weird with this being where it is though. So maybe we bring this C. That's really nice. So maybe on this one, we bring this G up here and we have this G there. It's a bit sudden, but it kind of works. And you can see, I mean, the things you could do with this are endless. That's just with tossing a verb on at the end. We could do some cool things with delays. I got a couple additional ideas spatially. I think it definitely would work as sort of a space thing, though, like some version of a verb. 
Uh, that's just a little bit more than what you would kind of expect out of a verb. Um, even some light gating could be kind of a cool effect with a delay on each on each one. You could even do them differently so that they echo back and forth with some ping pong. I mean, you got options. Mid side stuff is available to you. But the general idea is, you know, we can use a pitch shifter to retune these things and we can use some pretty clever MIDI routing and it all happens with one piano roll and it gives you just a ton of power. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.